We're here to answer your game gaming and game night questions. You can send your questions to questions at tabletopbellhop.com or head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on Ask the Bellhop. Uh, social media works too. We're everywhere as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. Now, the best ways for questions to come through the website because that way they get logged nice and simple and they don't get missed because sometimes social media stuff just flies by. I'm not going to say no to a question asked anywhere. So first up, before we get to the question, I do want to thank our Patreon backers at our new hotel guest level or higher. Uh, this is something new we launched a couple days ago, and one of the rewards they get is they get to vote on what topic we talk about. So this is our first ever patron-picked topic of the show. So thank you, hotel guests. All right, well, tonight we've got a question from Rob Day, who asks, I have a co-worker who used to play mini war games when he was a younger man. He's specifically into historical tanks and looking at getting back to the table. Are there any good strategic board games that might scratch that itch without requiring him to dive fully back into collecting a whole army of miniatures? All right, thanks for the question, Rob. I do wonder if this is Boo Day RPG. If Rob Day, just the day carryover, I could be way off. It is. Thanks for the question, Boo Day. So I'm pleased to say there are a few options out there. Now, miniature gaming is still going strong. And I got to say, it may be cheaper than you think to get into nowadays. There, there are definitely alternatives. There are some great tabletop alternatives to the full army building hobby miniature game. Now, one thing I sh we should say up front is that neither of us are historical war gamers. Uh, I find it's a very niche market. And there is likely some very detailed information out there in the depths of the forums and groups and, and Twitter hashtags that these people use that we're not privy to. They're probably still on use now. <laughs> that being said, we both did our research on this one to try and find ways that Rob's co-worker can whet his appetite. So one of the wargaming series I actually do play and do enjoy. This is pretty much, I, I like the block series from Columbia Games. That's, that's I didn't include that in this. So, but uh, is the Command and Color system from designer Richard Borg. Uh, he's produced a lot of different games. I think the first was Gettysburg, which was the American Civil War, and he's gone on to do as much as giant robot mech battle. Uh, the system combines card-driven movement, where you get a bunch of command cards and you move units on either the ref right flank, left flank, or middle, or all over. It actually has the whole flanking system, and dice-driven combat. And the way the commands is the cards, the colors are the dice are color-coded and so are the units, so you need a green roll on your die to kill a green unit. That's the bit really distilled down man and color system. Now, the one I want to point out here that I think may be good for Rob's co-worker is Memoir 44. This is a World War II-based war game using a simplified version of the CNC system. And I would say overall, and others agree, that this is the best entry point to CNC. It's the most distilled down, most basic, quickest to play, simplest version. Now, to me, I actually found it a little too simple, but this game has a ridiculous number of expansions to up that complexity and get to that big war game feel. Now this does have miniatures, which is why we had our miniatures sort of. So, but there's no hobby aspect. These aren't miniatures you have to assemble. There's no painting, there's no sprues, there's no clipping. They're basically board game pieces. They're, they could be cubes, instead they're minis. You just put, take them out, pick, and play, pick up and play. Uh, my first is actually rather similar. Uh, so an accessible, but really quick light war game is Axis and Allies 1941. But if you are concerned, it might be a bit too light. You know, you've got those those old war game jeans in there and you're ready to just slog on. You can jump right into the 1942 edition, which is the full game and yeah. uh, about four hours of play rather than the two hour lighter game of the 1941. Yeah, if I remember correctly, the 42 is actually the original Avalon Hill edition, yes. the big box game yeah, that yeah. my 42, dad had. 42 is the full big on yeah. Axis. Whereas 1941 is actually one of the most accessible games for price too. It is ridiculously yeah, cheap. Yeah, no, it's 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 a low price. It's a reduced rule set, and it's a quick play. But if you really just want to whet your appetite and get a game, get a war game out every once in a while, mm -hmm. it could be the choice for you. All right, next game that came to mind specifically addresses the fact that Rob's coworker likes tanks. There is a series of games, simply enough, called Tanks. T A N K S. That's it. Tanks. There's a series of games put out by Gale Force 9. They're in small packages, small boxes. They can't be that expensive. To be honest, I didn't double check the price. Each set features two comparable tanks and a battlefield for them to fight on. And it's meant to match up 
uh, historically is probably the wrong term, but fairly accurately the comparison of the two tanks and how they match up against each other. Now, this is a miniature game. This is you have a tank miniature, you have it on a sprue, you got to take it apart, you got to glue it together, you might want to paint it, but you're only getting two minis. Like, there's no army collecting, there's no checking through army lists or anything else. It's go pick up a pack of tanks, get two tanks. And yes, you can go buy another pack of tanks and get more tanks, but you're never going to fill up like a four by four table full of tanks with this game. All right. Well, sticking specifically with tanks, I'm going to offer something a little on the different side. This is Tank Duel Enemy in the Crosshairs. Now, this is a card game representation of tank to tank battles on the Eastern Front of World War II. And they claim, again, I haven't played this game, but uh, I, I was looking into these things a lot, and they claim that they convey the urgency and claustrophobia of the experience. Uh, and what, I, what really caught my eye on this game was going through the ratings, the volume of ratings that specifically call out both how accurate the data is and how tank lovers love this game. So, given that uh, you mentioned your friend was a lover of tanks, this could be something they really enjoy. All right. On my side, ditching the minis now. So getting away from the miniature games, there are a ton of Hex Encounter war games out there. That's pretty much when I say war game, most people picture Hex Encounter games. Actually, I wonder if a newer generation of people picture miniatures now. But anyone says war game to me, I picture a big Hex map with a bunch of counters on it. Um, there are probably a war game for every miniature battle that's ever happened over the entire world at this point. Uh, they are definitely a subgenre of game, and there are tons of them. So what I did is I did some research on Board Game Geek, specifically looking for tank battles that would apply here. And the strongest suggestion seems to be, based on what I'm, I'm seeing, is Tank on Tank East Front. This is published by Lock and Load Publishing. I will admit I did not find this quickly available to sell for sale. Um, you might be able to get it at Lock and Load, but this isn't something you're going to find at Amazon. But what I liked about this is it's like 45 minutes to an hour and still rates extremely well on Board Game Geek. And uh, and there is also a Western Front, but I guess you noticed that it was low. It was rated. Yeah, it was a lower, lower rating, not a huge amount, but enough. Yeah. So another hex and card driven one would be Combat Commander, which has a long list of versions. But the Europe version is still currently in print mm -hmm. uh, and seems to play within that two to three hour range. I've actually got that one on my pile of shame. I don't know if I'll ever get to it, but it's on my pile of shame. It's the one I'm like, you know what? I hear it's one of the best, right? Hex Encounter yeah. games. So I'm like, if I'm going to try a Hex Encounter game and I don't want to go to Advanced Squad Leader, maybe I'll try this. Now, speaking of Advanced Squad Leader level games, you want something heavier and longer, much, much longer than these other games. Like we're looking at a minimum playtime of 300 minutes. Um, GMT games is probably when you want to look. And for tanks, nothing is rated better than a game called Panzer. And what's interesting about this is this is another game my dad had. My dad was into wargaming. He had the old, I don't know if it was Avalon Hill, but it was one of those bookshelf games. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was Avalon Hill. And this is a modern updating of the game that, based on the reviews, really fixed all the problems it had with it and is still one of the best hex games. Now, another one, if you really want to push it, is MBT. No, I don't know what that stands for. I probably should have looked it up. This is from GMT Games. This is even heavier and even longer than Panzer. It's pretty much like if you really want to deep dive and play a simulation, that might be what you're looking for. Right. Well, my next suggestion was just about to be a six to eight hour <laughs> hex simulation that seems to really resonate in the gaming community on BGG. But it turns out as I was about to do it, it's out of print. So instead, yeah. what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you over to Multiman Publishing at multimanpublishing.com, which has a huge number of options for heavy, miniature-less, historical hex games. And they'll tell you what's in print and not in, and out of print currently. Now, cool. they're also currently publishing Advanced Squad Leader. Now, I'm not quite sure how they got the license from Avalon Hill or what all that is, no. but they are not only the home for some of these other tank games, they are the home of advanced squad leader so i think you can guess that they're probably pretty well versed in how to do a hex game all right i got one more hex encounter one uh this is band of brothers ghost panzer again we're tying the tanks right in here i grabbed this because this is pretty much the mid weight this is between the 45 minute tank on tank and the gmt two hour games plays about an hour and a half and its weight is like two and a half under under two and a half so 
you know, race for the galaxy level of weight, which we like to consider our bare minimum, a little below the minimum on, on weight scale. All right. Well, let's say Rob's friend changes his mind and does actually want to get back into collecting armies, painting miniatures. We've got a couple of mo solid modern suggestions. May not be as expensive as you think. All right. The first one's uh, Osprey. Osprey makes the best wargaming books out there. They just Google Osprey. They, they also make wargaming history books, not just gaming books. Their military World War series is called Bolt Action. This, there's a supplement for it called Tank War, so if we want to t throw the heavy metal in there. This one blew up in 2013 and won multiple Origins Awards. This was considered the best modern war game to have come out in years in 2013. So that one looks fantastic if you want like the best of the best of what's out there right now. I don't know how approachable it is, though, because from what I understand from most Osprey games is you're not going to find bolt action miniatures. It's going to be up to you to go provide the minis. And that's how they do it. Their Frostgrave fantasy game is the same thing. You just use any fantasy miniatures you have, and then you can play Frostgrave. Now, what looks cooler to me, bolt action looks neat, but it looks a little too heavy, is a series of games called Flames of War. This is also fairly modern. I didn't look up which bullet came out. But what I like about this one is the scale. They scaled everything down. Now, it's not micro armor. I don't know if people are old enough to remember micro armor where your tanks fit on a dime. This isn't that small, but it's, I don't know, it's 50 millimeter, I think, or 20 millimeter scale versus your big 28, 32 millimeter fantasy ones. I would call this epic scale because that's what it reminds me of. What this means is you can field a bigger army for much less money. You don't need, well, you need as many miniatures, but they're smaller and cheaper. And the other thing I like is they are really good at putting out box sets, starter sets, like you can just buy a full army. Uh, and in this case, I suggest that Boudet's co-worker check out Flames of War Stalingrad. That is a tank-based starter that comes with, I think it's five tanks. All right. Well, I found something myself today that's made to be both inexpensive and easy for a war game. Additionally, while it's four miniatures, there's no reason you couldn't work with chits or cards or whatever you have as long you stick, pick a scale and stick to it. Uh, it doesn't come with miniatures. This is a, you know, BYO. But this is the FUBAR system from fubarwargames.wordpress.com. Now, this site is a little bit out of date, uh, and I saw some indication that they've moved on to Facebook or the like, but I was having a little trouble tracking them down. But the rules are all still there to download. The great part about this system is that it's one page. The entire design spec was a small unit uh, a small, small unit action war game that fit on a single page of A4 paper. Nice. And that's what they did. So 12 years ago, they built this war game system and they've been revising, tweaking, and theming it ever since. If you want fantasy, World War II, modern, Warhammer 40K, aliens, they have it all. And all the rules fit on one page. And then they've got some other downloads for uh, you know vehicles and, and uh, sheets you can work out your, uh, your army components on and things, manage units on. But uh, it's a fantastic little system, and you can use it with whatever you've got. Sounds cool. That's time to break up the plastic army, man. That's what that makes me think right then. I'm sure you could. Uh, you know, yeah. it really does seem like it. That's cheap minis. All right, one last historical war game recommendation for me. Now, this is if you can find it. Sean pulled off the game he couldn't find. Maybe I should have. Back in 2005, Avalon Hill and Wizards of the Coast got together and put out an Axis and Allies miniature game. This is back when Wizards of the Coast put all the D&D pre-painted minis and the Star Wars minis. Well, they did Axis and Allies ones too. The key here is that all the miniatures are pre-painted and pre-assembled and come with the rules for that unit in the box with that unit. So you buy a pack of tanks, you get all the rules for that tank. Now, you do need the base rules. You're still buying an army. You still have to do that, but you don't have to worry about any of the hobby stuff. You're not assembling, you're not painting, you're not doing any of that part. Now, we've covered a bunch of historical war games and games featuring tanks and military stuff. I want to talk about some other miniature game alternatives. Now, I mainly want to do this because there's some really cool alternatives out there that I want to highlight because they're very unique, and I don't know if people are aware of these, well, did exist at least. There's a lot of wars, both real and imaginary, that have been or can be simulated. Why stop at just one of them? All right. So first up, I mentioned Command & Colors. I basically already covered this, but there are a lot more games than Memoir 44. There's Battle Lore, which is fantasy armies battling each other. Get the second edition, skip the first. Second's way better. There's a Command & Color Napoleonics, 
and which is considered the, one of the best of the series, which I actually own downstairs. And Command and Color Agents, those use wooden blocks with stickers on them to represent units. All the units you need come in the game, and man, there are a lot. There's uh, 280 stickers in the base box. That, that I didn't have Netflix when I got that game. That kind of sucked. Uh, there's even a Game of Thrones version called Battle of Westeros. There are a ton of Command and Color games, and I actually have not played a bad one except for a modern one that was put out by Richard Board called Abaddon. I would stay away from that one, despite it being less than 15 bucks on Amazon. All right, well, I'm going to start way off of our original theme with the number two war game on Board Game Geek right now, War of the Rings 2nd Edition. Mm -hmm. To say this game gets a lot of love is a true understatement. This is the Lord of the Rings in the box, and if you happen to get bored of this multi-hour 4.08 weight masterpiece, mm -hmm. there are half a dozen expansions which can add even more depth and unit types to the game. But what shocked me was, as well as all this, yep. and I mean, this game has 3.4 thousand 10 ratings on BGG. Wow, uh, that's a lot. If you, um, from the, the total of ratings below 5, or 5 and below, is less than the number of 6 ratings. Like, it's, it's just, like, the, the ratings are, are, no, are hugely skewed to the positives here. And at Amazon.com, it's like 65 bucks right now for 200-plus oh. minis. But so, it's, it's a fantasy war game. <laughs> I do own this one. It's in the pile of shame. I don't play two-player games, especially four-hour two-player games. It just doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah. This is one maybe we should plan. So sometime when you're down, yeah, I yeah. should break I mean, out When there Lord are of the no Rings. events at BG. Yeah, and... like when there's no <laughs> events. Like this will be our, John and I play Lord of the Rings for the first time. War of the Rings, sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah I own this. It's, it's in, actually at the bottom of one of those piles of shame. What's really impressive, they put out a deluxe edition with all painted minis. Oh, oh. wow. <laughs> It, it, it was like $1,000, which actually makes me worry that some of those ratings are people's um, confirmation bias for spending that much. <laughs> but still, with those that many, even yeah, if no, that's it's, 500 it's, of them, it's still... Yeah, yeah I've heard good are... things about that game. Um, I, that was one I managed to pick up when Geekropolis closed that I, I didn't want to take, and Big J was like, no, no, it's supposed to be the best game ever. And I'm like, ah, just haven't gotten around to it, like many other games. I said two, two players, four hours, or, or possibly longer. I know it's a big game just doesn't happen here we don't the d and i don't have if we have four hours there's other things we're doing yep, right. and i don't mean that in a <laughs> <laughs> yeah. way all right back on track sort of uh this is one i found fascinating i this game blew my mind because at the time i was still spending hundreds of dollars on warhammer miniatures and this alternative seemed really cool it's a miniature war game alternative that came back in 2005 and it's called battlegrounds now this is a rank and file miniature game like ranks of units wheeling using musicians doing all the the warhammer fantasy battle stuff is the way i think of it because that was that was my first game you got all that changing ranks and formations right but no minis absolutely none what you have are cards and the cards show the units from top down and you literally wheel the units as if like the base of the miniatures it'd be like playing miniatures with just a bunch of bases out. and then the other neat thing is they were laminated and you could use dry erase. Well, actually, I think back then it was actually wet erase you had to use because dry erase wasn't that popular. And you could you just cross off units as they died. I got to say, like, this this I thought was really cool. Though I would have this on the main list for, for Rob's co-worker, but I think they only ever did fantasy. So I didn't see a historical version, which I'm kind of surprised. Like, the concept was so cool. All right, well, for my final recommendation, I'm going to hope that Rob and his friend have kids. Because if you have kids, you probably have Lego or some form of Lego-compatible building brick. And if you have Lego, then you can have Brick Wars. The building brick combat system from Brick Wars at BrickWars.com. Mm -hmm. And as a side note, I did notice that the FUBAR system I mentioned earlier can be used with Playmobil. So if you <laughs> aren't a Lego person but are a Playmobil person, you might want to check out using FUBAR for those for those toys as a combat system. So Deanna will know what I'm talking about now. We might have to download FUBAR because my kids did some Playmobil Army thing. I live tweeted it when it happened. <laughs> so a bunch of people saw it where I was just quoting the stuff and it was all about the reserves and these people to get to move up and the torturers do this. And that was all with Playmobil. So yeah. that might be perfect. FUBAR is only one page. So there yeah. you go. <laughs> I might have to give my cop a copy of that. Um, you mentioned Brick Wars. That reminded me of something else. Well, not. It's military, but not. Um, 
historical is uh, Mobile Frame Zero. This is a mech battle using Lego, or sorry, constructible bricks, whatever. It's not necessarily Lego. I actually own a copy of this where you build your mech and you get dice based on what bits you have on it. And when you get blown up, you actually take off parts. And the ne neatest rule in that was the scenery was destructive because it was Lego. Right. So if you shot a wall, you actually removed bricks, bricks from it and it gave less cover. So that's another one that might be worth checking out. All right. Last one is the strangest game on my list. Um, I've talked many times about how I like unique mechanics. And that's definitely what this has. This was a game called Disc Wars. It was originally released by some like collectible card game company, and you would buy booster packs of these things, and it was generic fantasy. Thankfully, Fantasy Flight got the rights to that and just released a Warhammer Fantasy Battle version. In this game, your miniatures are replaced by different sized discs. So these aren't maneuvering like the other ones. The neat bit here is you literally flip the disc to move across the battlefield, but you can flip them any way, so that you can do some really neat stuff with maneuvering around things and turning, plus the size of the disc actually affected either how quick the unit was or how maneuverable it was. So like your giant dragon might only get to flip once, but it was a huge disc, so it covered a huge part of the battlefield. Whereas your little Skaven were a little tiny disc, but they could flip multiple times so they could get around all the corners. When combat happens is if they overlapped, and of course there were rules for ranged combat and ranged rulers because it was a Warhammer game, and it used dice-based combat, but I just thought it was such a neat concept. And to me, like, yeah, it was a simplified version of Warhammer Fantasy Battle, but I didn't have to take out my miniatures. I didn't have to get out all my range rollers. I didn't have to get build my army ahead of time. I just sat down. I picked up some of these discs. We sat down, put out a 3 by 3 board, and played. Uh, I really liked it. Like, to me, it, it scratched that same itch. It let me get my Warg on and play my Orc Army without having to get my Orc Army out. And I didn't have to buy more units. Like, you just got the units. That came. There were expansions for other armies, but, like, there weren't more orcs. You just, you bought the orc box, you bought the elf box, you bought the other, the other box. The problem is, it didn't do so good. And it's dead. I think, if I remember correctly, it was dead before Fantasy Flight lost the Warhammer license. So that was just, that game didn't do well. I still have a copy. It's neat. It's a very cool game. It's definitely something different. But, again, you're stuck to fantasy. Like, you're, you know, no tanks here. Well, except you count the Dwarven Steam tank. But that's something else. Yeah, so they came out with Disc uh, uh It was Amigo that came out with the original Disc Wars. The original, yeah. Uh, and then they did Legend of the Five Rings, Warhammer, uh, and they did three or two expansions or two versions of the, the Warhammer Their one, expansions, I guess. expansions, yeah. There's the Dwarf Hold and the something. I can't remember what the other one is. Yeah, it's uh, Disc Wars Hammer and Hold and Disc Wars Legion of Darkness. Yeah, Undead. That's what it was, the Dwarves and the Undead. But uh, last last printing was 2014. Yeah, that's... Six years now. Yeah, and the original, but the original one was from nineteen ninety nine. Yeah, I say it was the collectible card game. Yeah. it was it was Magic the Gathering. I did Magic the Gathering, and you would buy boosters and you would get random discs in it, right? And you'd be like, oh, I got a whatever. And I got to admit, I thought it was stupid then. <laughs> Once they put the Warhammer name on it, I gave it a shot. Actually, I got to thank uh, local gamer Matt Casagrande, to uh, that pulled that one out. He he brought that game out, and I tried it, and I'm like, oh, this is actually really good. And another here's here's just for a total offshoot. You want to talk about miniature games, let's talk about Blood Bowl. Buying a team, painting a team, that's a pain in the ass. Blood Bowl Team Manager, in my opinion, is a better game, and it's a card drafting game. It's way off track, but it is a miniature game that you can replace the miniature with and actually play, in my opinion, a better game. We should play Blood Bowl Team Manager sometime. Because we should. I, love so I don't Blood think Bowls. you've tried it. And I've never tried the, the Team Manager. Yeah. I love Blood it Bowl. It is really good. Really good. It manages to catch that feel. You just play out highlights of each match and see who wins the tournaments right. and you get the money and you buy your star players. Like it just, it, it gets that whole league feel yeah, yeah. without the three hour game of mooning your miniatures and watch your guys fall over and the ball just not go anywhere. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right. All right. If you've got a question for us, head over to the website, click on ask the bellhop or email us at questions at tabletopbellhop.com. Now that we're done with our thoughts on the main topic, let's head over to the lobby and see what they think. All right, I saw some stuff going on there. I don't think we have any real wargamers in the chat, but I do see some miniature wargamer alternatives mentioned. So uh, Ryan just mentioned uh, Battle Lore, uh, which does seem to be a... No, oh, that's a Command and Colors. And I mentioned that one. That's a Command and Colors. There were two of them. There's You want to get second edition. I think Jeff joined in a little later. We'd already covered that one. That was actually my, my first recommendation for a replacement of an army-building war game was to pick up Battle Lore, or sorry, pick up a Command and Colors game. And my recommendation was for um, Memoir 44, because the the person the question was about war games. 
specifically featuring tanks. And Memoir has tanks. But if you want others, Battle Lore, the second edition is fantastic. They did this really neat thing. It's weird. Okay, Battle Lore, this is almost uh, bonus content in a way. The original Battle War decided it wanted to be a historic war game, but threw in fantasy elements, and you play through the War of the Roses. They don't tell you that, but that's what you're doing, and there's a bunch of set scenarios where you play through it, starting with the Battle of Agincourt. Wait, they didn't call it War of the Roses, but they didn't change the names of the battles. Odd. And yes, I actually know a couple historic battles. Told you, I play some of these. Not a lot. I don't do the Hex Encounter thing. I do the other ones. Um, and the game was really good. Like, it was a really solid semi-historic, you know, like it, the Agincourt was a bunch of air archers versus a bunch of uh, uh, cavalry. So it was an interesting fight, right? And it was really cool. And then you get to the next scenario and adds new stuff, and then it throws in some scenery and stuff. But then you get to the rules for heroes. So all of a sudden you have these hero characters, and when you roll these certain numbers on the dice, you get spells, and then you have these historic battles with these hero heroes that are coming in, just basically messing with it. And it just didn't mesh well. So then what came out was Battle Lore Second Edition, where they went, no, what people liked was the heroes and the spells. So let's throw out all the historic thing. And what they literally do now is it's neat because there's a deck of battlefields and you shuffle it. And the one side draws one from their deck and the opponent draws one from their deck. Well, actually, I think you draft, you get two or three and you pick them. And when you put those two cards together, that gives you the map for the battlefield. And there's like something like 3,000 possible combinations with the cards in the original game. So there's no historical accuracy here. And then those cards determine where your units go and everything else. And then there's army building rules. And Battle Lore is fantastic. It's, it is a really good commanding colors game. And then if you want the historic thing, that's when you get into, like I said, there's Napoleonics, there's commanding color ancients, and Memoir is the, uh, the modern war version. Yeah, no, it's it's a it's a huge pool to dive into. Like when I started researching this today, uh, it was like, wow. I mean, there are I mean, there's so many war gamers out oh, yeah. there, and historical re recreationists versus the fun war gamers, and yeah. simulationists versus gamers. Yeah, there's correct. all these different uh, cliques within the war gaming community, and they really do ha still have some of these, you know, forums deep in the depths of the, where they've been forever. Uh, you know, if uh, or if you can yeah. find them, and if you know where to where to look, uh, there's a ton of stuff out there, and and it's incredible. They'll they they do a lot of you know house ruling things, and it's like, well, this tank, this tank doesn't actually fire that way, so we're gonna do this, that, and the other thing. And yeah, uh, there's the the term grognar comes from war gamer, so yeah, yeah. Napoleonic <laughs> war gamer specifically. Uh, no, the thing I stayed away from most of those just because hex encounter to me is something totally different versus miniature war gaming. But if you're looking to replace miniature war gaming, I think it's an option. Whereas the board games, the Euro games, the battle lords to me are a little more thematic, a little more in between. Um, what I, what's odd is there's no like X-Wing equivalent. Like like quick, I guess that was the Axis and Allies miniature game that didn't last. Right. But I couldn't find anything like there's like if you're into planes, there's um, Wings of Glory and Ace of, a Ace of Aces. So there are some plane ones, but I didn't see them. And, Nav and Naval is another totally different Yep. Naval battle is another thing. It's almost like train games. Yep. I yeah, know it's it's a very war war games in general are, are very niche yeah. and then because I mean, the number one war game I wasn't even gonna re re recommend because it's actually a very heavy card based Cold War simulation that doesn't Twilight really Struck. get into the um uh, that really doesn't get into the whole sort of simulation that it sounded like Rob and his friend were into. Yeah, Twilight Struggle still lists as number one war game that runs. Yeah. It's an area control Euro game. It's not even a war game. Yeah. There's no units. You don't move units. You yeah, don't. Exactly. It's, <laughs> it's, it's card play and it's area control. It's yeah. not a war game. There, there's a big debate about whether it's a war game. I'm on the it's not a war game side. It's a game about war that does not make it a war game. Yeah. And no, I don't think it's a good recommendation at all. If you were into like painting miniatures and building armies, no. Twilight yeah, exactly. Struggle. That's why, that's why I skipped down to Absolutely the War of the the war of the rings instead because i'm like you know i i can't it's it actually sounds like it's probably a really great game yeah it's it was it's the number one game on board this. game geek for 10 years yeah it, it was beat out by pandemic legacy then beat out by gloomhaven and now slowly dropping because it's they haven't updated it yeah uh <clears throat> do you have any comments on the uh the christmas uh car wars that came out i they put out this car game from steve jackson games i don't know they put this name of this good game on it and released <laughs> something new 
Uh, yeah, they're you, selling out, the they're thoughts. cashing in on their own name, which I fully expect them to do, but I expected the game they produced to have something in common with the original other than Cars with Guns. It, it is not, there, there's nothing similar. It's, this is a more complicated Wings of War X-Wing. Um, you have the same template for every car, so it's not even X-Wing. It's simpler than that. Um, I was willing to watch through a full actual play until they got to the point where they kept talking about how, I forget the term they used, it's it's not simulation, it's funimation or something. And they got to the point where if your cars crash, and when your cars crash, you do this stuff to figure out damage, and then the rule is, and this is a game that's going to have tournaments, you just push your car the rest of the distance, and wherever the two cars end up is where they end up. And I'm like, no, not in Car Wars. Like, like this is meant, more simulation than that. Yeah. If I'm going to be playing in a tournament where there's prizes, I don't want someone nudging my car. Like, just pushing it until they end up where they end up. That was the worst rule I've ever heard in a miniature game. Yeah, especially for something tournament-related. You don't want right, exactly. to fudge, you don't want to fudge around with, like oh, the guy pushes, pushes wrong. You pushed a bit to the left instead of straight. Yeah. Like, oh. I, I would not, I mean, imagine being a referee for that kind of tournament. I, exactly. you tear your hair out. Oh, man, no. I, it, Except for that, it looks like it's interesting, overly... Steve Jackson just likes complicated games, right? That's the kind of games they make. They're fiddly. And it still had a lot of that. Like, it, despite the fact it was not Car Wars, because Car Wars, oh my god, you like you needed a, you need craft paper to figure out how to turn and turn yeah. templates and points and skid tracks and, and tracking each individual tire. And they abstracted a lot of that, but you still had a bunch of this stuff. And I gotta say, I played Gaslands. Gaslands is fantastic. Gaslands is Car Wars. If you want to play Car Wars in 2020, pick up Gaslands. You're going to have more fun. You get to make the miniatures yourself, you know, to matchbox cars. That was the other thing. Car Wars. Okay, you have Car Wars? None of the miniatures matter. You pick one and put it on a base. Yeah. It literally meant nothing. There are no stats for the different vehicles in Car Wars. Oh, I just... I was, I was very disappointed. Uh, I backed Ogre partly so that they would put out Car Wars, because I do like the original. I've only, I only ever played it digitally, but I actually own the deluxe edition and tried to read through it. I could read through it. I could play it. I just don't know if it sounds like that much fun. It would be fun with the right people, I think. Like, Sean and I would probably have fun playing Car Wars, because we get into that minutia and figuring out the inches. And But most of the people I'd game with normally probably would not have fun with Car Wars. They might with the new edition. So, I'm all for it. If people want to get the new edition of Car Wars, feel free enjoy just don't expect that old crunchy simulation game so the guys are talking about demolition uh, derby games and things uh, there is actually something reasonably recent called Dur diesel demolition derby that came out in uh, 2017 um, a it's a card based uh, it's, a, it's a card game basically but um, there's a is... fantasy flight silver line game might be called Carmageddon damn Hey, it's not an AMA. I'm going to Google. Terrible. I'd be surprised if they have a Carmageddon. Uh... That's the video game, right? Silver Line Games. Here's the list of them. Yeah, there's no Carmageddon. It is a Demolition Derby game, and it's actually solid. In 1999, something came out called Authentic Demolition Derby. I'm on, there's a lot of these games. Wow. But it only never... has 12 ratings. So I... Oh, no, what? They've, some of the modern games are considered silver line games, which they shouldn't be, in my opinion. I'm still missing it. Mentor Lords, Quick uh, yeah, this, looks, this looks a lot like a game that you know, Mo and I would have written in university. I'm not seeing it. <laughs> but this uh, authentic demolition derby that came out in 1999. It's, you know. A simulation of a real demolition derby as it is done at your local fairground. Um, but again, 12 people have played it. What the hell? I can picture it. Published you had a Raccoon Game for... Worm. The only you thing they've ever published. <sighs> I hate when I can't remember. Well, maybe we can dig that up Eight? at the, uh, the end of the show or during the coffee. Uh... I can picture I didn't own it myself. That was part of the problem. That was part of the problem. Wasteland Express. No. Why do people <laughs> always recommend that as a Car Wars game? There is nothing. It's it's post-apocalyptic. That's it. Please, people, stop recommending that as a race game, a car wreck game. Russian Crush. I have that one. 
It wasn't very good. Thunder Road. That's not. Wreckage. Wreckage. That is the name of the game. Wreckage from Fantasy Flight Game. But good luck trying to find it. Yeah, 2003 release. All right. I wouldn't have got that. Like, I wasn't even <laughs> close. Like, what was running through my head? Nowhere near wreckage. Yeah, 2003 Fantasy Flight game. It does look interesting, though. It was good. It, it was it was surprisingly well done. Like, all the, all the Silver Line games are cheaper, lighter games that are quick to set up and that. They kind of remind me of the, the 8-bit box. There's something we have to review. It I got to get not, that back. It does not rate well. Uh, I remember having fun with it, but this was yeah. years ago, too. That is not a modern game. All right. All right. Be sure to stick around after we're done the recording. We got a preview of our next giveaway coming up in the after show. Package showed up yesterday. I am going to be opening it. I've now teased it twice. Have you figured out what it is yet? We'll be checking in the lobby again uh, later throughout the show, or later during the show.